Hi everyone, it's Crappy Kathy here with Mixed Media Mayhem, and I'm also doing a um, one of the uh, uh, Elvis challenges, and this one is to use um, tropical um, embellishments. I'm not going to go full bore heavy duty tropical because it is a scrap lift and it's all about the mixed media, not so much about the embellishments, but I do have uh, a little nod to the, the tropical. The photo I'm using is of Ava in a, um, in a floaty that looks like a flamingo. So that's kind of tropical. And I'm just going to kind of say that this background kind of stumped me at first. And then I remembered the papers that my friend Sharon sent me that she said she thought uh, would be good backgrounds for mixed media. And this is one of them. I don't know if you can see that that has a very, very faint, it has a texture to it and it has a very, very faint map and I'm not sure which is the right way up. I think this is the right way up. I don't know that it matters because I'm going to kind of cover it all up. And in uh, as a nod to the water, I, I've, I've cut a quarter of an inch around the sides so that I can do this um, distressing and, and, and bending and, and ripping and tearing and all of those things. Um, and I want to have something to glue it down onto because this is a regular piece of uh, pattern paper. It may have a little bit of a coating on it, which might help, but I expect that it will warp and I'm going to go with that. That's kind of what I'm going for. So I'm going to put the original and the, um, the background, the, the paper that's going to go behind it off to the side and I'm going to use a, a, a lot of things but one of the things I'm going to use is this stencil and I honestly cannot tell you where this came from it could be a crafters workshop it could be a stencil girl and I've used it only with like wet media I haven't done what I'm going to do today which is brush ink through it uh, distress oxide ink through it and then I have this Bubbles stencil from um, <clears throat> Scrap the Sketch. It's one of Lisa's sketches that she did back in the um, Dotty About Flare days. So I have a couple clusters already kind of built uh, to go um, top right, bottom left. But right now, um, it's all about the mixed media. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use these kind of um, soft applicators to do some just kind of uh, uh, just coloring in some of the areas. Uh, this is um, speckled egg, and I don't want it everywhere, but it's a nice um, kind of background color, and I'm going to use it in corners and edges. And then I have tumbled glass that I'm going to do next. And I will uh, do some variation in the uh, – I'll sprink, spritz it with water to give it some, some water reactivity that will change – kind of the flat, smooth, brushed on look. And I love this color, this tumbled glass. It's one of the first colors he came out with. And to me, it's the prettiest 
of the light blues. And it's a good water kind of color. Okay, so I've done pretty much all the edges and come up into the center a little bit. And now I'm going to take the, I have salvaged patina is the next color I'm going to use. I'm going to take this stencil, and I think that the bottom cluster, I can kind of size that, I guess. The bottom cluster is going to come out to here, and I want this word love kind of right there. So I'm going to move it down here. It's not going to be real distinctive. Um, I don't want it to just have be a high contrast sort of thing. So I'm going to kind of do this so, around the word so that it does sort of stand out. And then I'm going to go through and do around the outside of the stencil as well as through the holes in it. And speaking of holes, I think I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and color in these circles with, um, with this lighter color. And then I'm going to use Lisa's stencil to do the, um, the bubbles in uh, peacock feathers with, but I'm going to apply it differently with a, a brush that I'll brush it on a lot lighter with. Now, I love this look right here. This is going to look, I think, like, I don't know, seaweed or coral or something. It's very, uh, it's just beautiful. And I want it, I'm kind of brushing around the outsides and, and sort of burnishing it in uh, just to get a, to have the, the look intensified, I guess is maybe what I'm saying there. And I love this stencil so much and I've used it a lot with a variety of mediums, I, most of which uh, didn't get fully washed off. <laughs> so, okay. So now we'll look at what we have here. This is the, can you see that? Can I turn this so that the light is different? Anyway, it's very kind of subtle, and it's, to me, it has a look of uh, maybe a pool, sort of, uh, tropical, I don't know. It has a tropical look to it, to me. Now, peacock feathers, I'm going to get my other applicator, I'll put those away and I'm going to do this kind of right here and I again don't want it you know heavily contrasting but I do want to see it I've just laid it over the other stenciling, and this is going to provide a backdrop for the top right hand cluster. Okay, and it did do some nice 
bubbles, but I'm not absolutely certain that they're bright enough. I was afraid this would be too bright. So I'm gonna press down a little, particularly on the ones above and below. And, and these bubbles are meant to sort of compete with the other circles. Okay, so there's kind of what that looks like. Now I'm gonna do this one sort of down here, and I don't wanna overlap on the word love because I want that to show. So I'm gonna move it over to here. And there we go. And I'm maybe gonna put a few more bubbles over on this side. Let me turn this a little wonky so the arrangement doesn't look too contrived. Okay, and I'm gonna do similarly over along this edge and maybe up here with this color just laying in right over those other colors that I put down at the very beginning. And let me add a, a few up in there. Okay, I've got my background now. I think I'm happy with it, but what we wanna do next is do some water spritzing. And while the water's down, I'm going to splatter. Actually, I'm going to shake the splatters and then I'm going to dry the water. I'm getting a lot of the um, kind of grainy look that the water reactivity gives in the, the darker spots, which is really kind of cool. And the word love shows, but very subtly. So here, this is um, uh, Dina Wakely Gloss Spray in a turquoise color. So it's gonna be a different color from everything else that's down there. I love how the little bits of map kind of show through. Sharon, thank you very much for this gorgeous paper. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of splatter all over. And then I'm gonna dry the splatters. Okay. And that's a beautiful background for the hot pinks that are going to go on over it. Okay. So, put that aside. Now, I'm going to build the clusters. I'm going to do the bottom left one because I really want to be sure that love is there. I'm going to distress it, the, this banner a little bit and kind of curl it up, but I'm not going to put any foam behind it. Don't ask me why. When I feel the foam, I put the foam. When I don't feel the foam, <laughs> I don't put the foam. And I can't tell you when I feel it. That's one of those things. Okay, next I'm going to put this arrow. In the original, there were three uh, banners, not arrows, banners, and um, they were kind of, a couple of them, well, they were overlapped. And then 
there was another photo. Well, I don't have a second photo, so I'm just going to put a, uh, a big circle that embellishment that has been in my stash for a long time. And I have no idea where it came from. I'm going to do some more. Not full, 100% distressing, just kind of some of the, of each edge. Put that down. So I've got my, can you see that? You can if I put it out here. Is that where I need to be working for the, you can't see that at all if I have it. Let me see if the, if it's, that may be better when I'm working over here. In any case, I'm going to put this down. This is a chipboard, and it says, Oh, happy day. And I'm going to put it kind of right down near, but not over or under that um, little pink banner because I kind of want it to, to show. And I have this little crab. It's a bramble fox crab. I'm not sure whether I want it up here or down here, climbing up onto it. Um, I think I want this summertime to go right across there. So I'll put the crab someplace else. <laughs> I love the background. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. And do I want this here? Crawling off and maybe up. That works. And now I have this little bramble fox um, asterisk. And I have my little hearts down here. I'm going to have them coming off of this bottom banner. And I have the pool blue and the hot pink. So I'm re kind of uh, repeating the colors that are going to be up at the top. So now we're going to do the top and I want to be sure that you can see that. Where is that? What's the best way for that to show. Okay, here we go. I'm going to distress this. This paper is pink fresh. It's I'm using the gray dotted side instead of the cut aparts that are on the other side because I just didn't think I would ever use the sentiments that are on there. I'm going to put this here. And then this banner. These, um, whoops, ooh, 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 ooh. the floral paper and the little uh, hot pink hearts are both. Um, Bella Boulevard, and they're different collections, but I thought they would look nice together. I especially wanted to get this hot pink um, color down into the into the bottom cluster. Okay, so this goes there.
and then she's got some mandalas on the original i'm going to use a doily and then this i will put some foam on it uh, let's see so I'll continue my purple foam from yesterday on my purple page. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Jamie <laughs> actually noticed that I had used on my purple page, I had used, even my fun foam, which was hidden, was purple. <laughs> I thought about that as I was doing it, but didn't really expect anyone to, to notice it. Okay, that's going to go there, and then, whereas in her original, and let me see if I can pull it up here, oh gosh, come on, she has hearts and kind of dimensional splatters around, I'm going to use other small embellishments and sequins, so we'll... We'll see. we'll see how that works out for me. Um, one thing I want to do is there's another little boy in the pool with her there. I want to cover him with a seagull. Nothing against him. It's just... I don't want him on my page. And to replace some of those hearts, I've got these tropical leaves. And I will arrange them around a, these are bramble fox, and they're in the um, turquoise color, or the teal color. I'll arrange them around a yellow flower that's kind of shaped like the bramble fox, uh, or the, um, the Bella Boulevard flowers on the pattern paper. Let me turn this up a bit. I kind of cut into that. Um, so I've got this, oops, I got a splatter on my Bramble Fox. And this says, take it easy. And I thought I'd put it here. So that has the, the hot pink color over in that area. I have this little thing that says Silly Monkey, and it's in brown, which kind of the, the Bella Boulevard background for those flowers kind of looks like a brownish black. I think it really is black, but it reads as though it could be brown, so I'm not ashamed to use that. I've got this... Um, bit of flare that was a, a kind of a, a um, joint venture with uh, between Dotty About Flare and Bramble Fox and it came in a mystery box that I bought myself with some Christmas money a while back. Let's see where I want to put this. I don't have a have any foam on it I want this is a, a baby squirrel and it was uh, in some uh, cream colored cardstock so I used uh, picked raspberry to color it this bright pink and I'm gonna put it maybe right there kind of on top of the photo and then I have this that says vitamin C kind of right there and she's in a pool yeah but you know um, I think it's still vitamin C if water is involved and the um, 
the photo just has that I think that's a photo that her mom took and that's that was their um, neighborhood pool at the time and I just noticed that I had it or I grabbed it from James's um, Facebook <laughs> I, I, do, I do that a lot they're like I, I've explained before there are a lot of photos that um, James took and put on Facebook that I never got hold of and so now it's a good source for for photos so I'll show you kind of what we have so far there's that I'm going to put some sequins and then I'm gonna uh, swirl it around kind of tear it and uh, well actually let's go ahead and do that so that I don't put sequins any place that's gonna be kind of curled. And to my surprise, it didn't really um, warp that much, even with the spray of water. So it's a really good, uh, I'll note to self, I, I won't have to worry about it um, when I do that with some of the other papers. And I'm holding my glue while I do that, and the glue's trying to come out of the bottle. So here, I'm just kind of curling it back and making it look sort of uh, distressed and all those things. Okay, now, now I'll do some, get some glue down here. I'm going to do a few sequins kind of over here and here, like not that many. Uh, just a little sparkle in that water. And kind of tone on tone sequins so that they really are just adding sparkle, not a lot of contrast. Okay, and then similarly up here, I'm going to do some here, 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 one up there, and a few down here. And that's all I'm going to do here. Reese barking. So a mail delivery must be arriving. I love this sequin mix, the patina finish. It was released around the time that salvaged patina uh, was added to the Tim Holtz range of colors. And I've just used it, used this sequin mix for pretty much every watery page I've done. I need one more sequin here to make this a an uneven number. And then I've got another few. I think there's actually one right here. There. That, that one actually shows up nicely because it's on the gray and white background. There. And let's see, where are my others? They're here, here, and here. Okay. I let the glue dry, and of course it dries clear. And with a matte finish, so it's kind of hard to see. It's not fully dry. It's actually the perfect level of dryness to put sequins down because it doesn't, they don't mush into a blob of glue. 
and I'm not seeing where there's another there maybe I'm gonna have to open my glue again guys because I want one right there and then I have one here that's loose So I'm maybe going to put it right here on the doily. Okay, and I think we're done. Let's put it on the back sheet of paper and put that over there so that I don't dump them all over the table like I did in my last video, <laughs> like twice. Uh, let's see. Here's the back sheet, and that's what it's going to look like. Let me get it uh, mounted on here, and then I'll hold it up and show you. And I like the, um, the orange accents and the hot pink that's kind of carried all over the page. I, I do like this. I wasn't, uh, like I said, I wasn't sure. I really was intimidated by that uh, scrap lift. Let me press it down, make sure it's mounted, and I may add some liquid glue if I feel like I need to. But here's the finished. Let me turn this other light on and see if that helps. I have no idea whether it will or not. There's what it looks like. You can kind of see the, the texture and pattern that's uh, in the background paper, especially with the, the map kind of showing through, like right in there. And I love it. it it's got muted, kind of watery looking colors in the background, and then these pops of bright colors that really kind of set off the photo. So I'm happy with it. I hope you enjoyed watching it. And if you haven't subscribed, I would like to ask you to please do so. Uh, I'm very close to a milestone. And when I hit the milestone, I will have a hop and a giveaway. So I've been gathering little things for my giveaway. Uh, ever since I noticed that I was getting close. And so I hope you'll uh, you'll subscribe and, and get be in the running for um, a giveaway. Thank you for watching. Let me get back again. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.